Hey guys, thanks for joining in the best practices show where we take a look at the best business practices from the best dental practices all over. And you know, this year has been turned upside down. A lot of us are doing this, which we're on Zoom, <laughs> video calls, all that kind of stuff. And you're like, I don't know if I could take any more. Today, we're going to be talking about your image on Zoom, Zoom and its impact with its intention and all that stuff with dentistry's image expert, Janice Hurley, who's a great friend of ours, who's been on the show many times before, mm -hmm. and you are going to love this. So do me a favor, grab a pen and hit the share button. You are absolutely going to enjoy this. Now, if you're joining us for the first time, I want to do two things. Number one, I just want to welcome you to show up and showing up to a community where people just, we love to learn here. We don't have all the answers, but sometimes we just have questions. And I want to encourage you to keep showing up week over week. I also want to encourage you to subscribe wherever you get podcasts, whether it be iTunes, Stitcher, Play, Google, whatever, because every single week we're going to bring you some new key opinion leaders, thought leaders, just to challenge you, make your life better, your practice better, all that kind of stuff. Also, we take great show notes here. So everything Janice and I talk about, you're going to see links to it. You're going to see, and actually I'm going to ask her this question. She sold out three workshops in one week, and mm -hmm. we're going to find out who actually signed up for them. And I'm going to encourage you to sign up for them also, and there will be links right in the show notes. So what I mean by that is, I don't care if you're listening on iTunes, whatever, go to the show notes and the links will be right there. You can just click on them. It'll take you right to them. So Awesome, awesome, awesome. So Janice, thank you for showing up and being here today. I really appreciate you. I always love having you on here because Thanks. you give me homework. I have to like go <laughs> work. Like last time, you know, I got dentists looking at you know, nose hair, ear hair, like how they dress, how they position themselves, all that stuff. And you, you often talk about the things that people don't want to talk about, but we need to be talking about now. Sure. I know there's a lot of people that might have been listening that do know you and you're an amazing speaker, all that. If mm -hmm. somebody's listening to this or watching this for the first time and they don't know who you are, share, share a little bit of your story. I'd love to know. Sure. I was introduced to practice management in dentistry 31 years ago. I was trained by a company called Practice Perfect. And so I used to have those groups, five offices at a time that would meet for two hours, you know, twice a week and learn the basic principles of business. And as time went on, I got asked to speak at the larger dental conferences, which was fantastic. And I would speak on, oh, the new patient experience, scheduling, the, you know, the usual. And at the same time, I would show before and after photos of the way the staff were dressed, the doctors were dressed. I would talk about proper body language so that somebody could know that you were listening and that you cared. And then before you know it, the meeting planners started inviting me to speak on image within dentistry. And so that's what happened. And I wrote a book last year, um, Your Image, Your Brand on the dental practice. So again, it really was that nobody else was saying some of the things that I thought were really important. So I wrote it down in a book. And as much as uh, some people love to write, that was uh, sometimes laborious because you have to stop and get it perfect and lots of photos inside because I take photos of my clients when I'm there so but life has changed a little bit you know my whole speaking year whether it was at uh, dental schools or at Hinman or um, Adom meetings it cleared out for 2020 and meetings that were booked for 2020 first were rebooked for 2021 and now they're into 2022. So we have um, come to connect in just this manner that I think at first we all thought was temporary. What did you think when this first started happening? Oh, I, I, I was like, okay, two or three weeks and then we'll all be back to normal. And you and I were chatting before we went live and I was just having a hard time keeping my feet, you know, cause it was bigger. <laughs> It was freaking me out to be completely vulnerable. Sure. Like, and so the world that we knew 
had been turned upside down. And as I talked to meeting planner after meeting planner, the same thing is on my yeah. side. I don't think we're going back to physical for a while. And even if somebody does say we're going back to, I'm like, I'm almost going to say you go first. Yeah. <laughs> you sure. know what I mean? Cause nobody wants sure. that liability either. So yeah. I think, I think we're into this current state a lot longer. As a matter of fact, I know we are than we anticipated. Um, and I'm, I don't know. I'm like I said, I don't have any answers. I just have questions. And that's why sure. I invite my friends like sure. you on here. Now, again, if you're listening to this, you got to check out Janice's stuff because you were talking about your book and her work is so good. Now you've worked with many offices that I coach. Like I'll go, I'll see them. I'm like, wow, you guys look great. What? Uh, Your hair looks better. Like they'll go Janice, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> or like uh, I'll see team photos of practices we've coached for a long time. I'm like, you guys look awesome. They go, Janice, yeah. so, or, speakers, or speakers, or lot speakers, a lot of speakers, a lot of speakers I've spent time with. Oh, all of, all of the biggies, whether it's yeah. Lois Banta or Melinda Hereford, or I, I've been very blessed. They will, they absolutely trust me. And so that's fantastic. All right. And I've off, you got to help me. Like I can't even dress myself. So like, Oh gonna, yes, you can. We're, yes, you can. You're going to take me shopping and check. Cause I got to get out of my regular pattern. So, <laughs> and going back to the whole day, you should create yes. a jingle that says, this is Janice. This, <laughs> like it's, that would be kind of cool, but um, Very cool. it's good stuff. Your work is fantastic. Now, thank you. Before we get into the, we're, today we're going to be talking about this whole new world that we live in image, but I want to start with the why. Like, why is this so important? Because this, I think this is a blind spot. Like you have created a solution for a blind spot in dentistry, and now we're in the digital world. Talk about the why of the importance. Because of the blind spot, because it's a new reality and we're back to having old habits. So we'll, we'll spend forever getting a headshot to be posted for the, with the meeting planners or put on our website or um, have your headshot for your Zoom meeting where what I say is that photo that you put up as your headshot for the Zoom profile should look just like the one that comes on the screen when your audience is there. So if you wanna wear a gray sweatshirt for the meeting, that headshot should have a gray sweatshirt, right? I mean, I think we have undervalued the fact that the visual. So the brain visually is taken up with 70%. So before you even speak, we couch or we frame or give value to what that person is saying or will say based on the visual. And particularly if we meet somebody the first time, we love to be right. We love to be right. In fact, we'll justify um, and put it through those rose colored glasses or dark colored glasses their actions in the future based on what we thought first impressions. So let me give you an example. So let's say in a Zoom call, you're being asked to interview, be interviewed. And if you start the meeting off with you're sitting back in your chair and you're drinking coffee, you're immediately telling the audience that this isn't that important and your time is more important than theirs. And that impression will last throughout. So your visual, is we're spending a little time about on time on and this is the reality of our visual right now so here we go yeah now as you were saying that like i i i think about like times you're disappointed like i'm sure you're all ordering from amazon you ever order something and you're like oh i can't wait for it to come and then you get it and you're like this is okay. terrible you know what I mean? like you're like i got the bait and switch on this yeah and same thing probably happens visually so so you're already giving me homework to do. So if I'm doing Zoom calls, which we're going to talk about in a second, in sweatshirts and my glasses, which I never wear because I can't see, I should probably take photos in a sweatshirt and glasses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If that's the image, we, if that's, be consistent with your persona. Whereas your photo before I get on the Zoom call or you get on the Zoom call with someone else, has you standing in an audience in a suit speaking to a group. So is today less important? Is the audience, so just, you're looking for consistency, brand, brand consistency. So part of your brand is how enthusiastic and upbeat and easy you are to be around, right? That's your brand and you're consistently been that way for as long as I've known you. Well, I appreciate that. I'm not yeah. the smartest guy, but it's awesome. Oh. Now, 
You might be listening to this going, okay, well, I'm a dentist. I'm not a speaker, but there's a whole new aspect of that. You you know, you had mentioned teledentistry. Like yeah. I think everybody's got to have a sense of awareness of this. So where do we start? Like unpack sure. this for us. Where do sure. I, again, where do I start? Sure, sure. So um, the very first place to start is recognizing and honoring your audience. So to me, everything that we present visually is to say to my audience, you're important. I want to make this as easy as possible for you to hear, right? So our audio is important. I want to make this easy for you to focus on. And there are reasons why we're drawn to or more comfortable with one speaker over another. And, and what I say is, if you're on a Zoom call for any reason at any time, there's real value in just understanding what you have control over and what you do. Don't. So I look for consistency, making it just as easy as possible for people. Right, right. Not being on your phone, walking around or turning your camera on and off or anything like that. Yeah. You know, it, the, the user experience on the other side, is, other side is absolutely critical. The other thing you pointed this out, I never realized how important audio is. You've heard many experts say the most important thing to video is audio. And it's kind of a mind mess. But can you talk about like audio being poor? when you're communicating through video, like you see it a lot. Sure, and, and it ends up being um, some of the settings that you make sure that you click when you're doing a Zoom call. So you wanna make sure that you've clicked the box that just says you're listening through the, um, the headset that you have on and not clicking on that you want the headset plus the phone. And the good news is, as much as some of the more expensive uh, um, microphones we've tried out in the beginning, the reality is your audio has more to do with the size of your room. The smaller the room, the better. And rooms that have um, carpet and a couch with some material on it, all of those things help soften. And then the key to clarity is that your microphone is as close as possible to your mouth. And um, some of the clients that I've worked with have had problems with the ear pods, the small little ones. So for some reason, audio goes in and out sometimes on those. So just a simple uh, ear set like this works fine. Yeah, so now you sent over a few of, and one of my favorite people in dentistry, can I just show this? Yeah. Like you and oh, I, oh. <laughs> this wonderful person. Oh, right? she's fantastic. Okay, so tell Thanks us- just give us some perspective on this. Like, sure. what, are we, what are we looking at here? And what did, yeah. you, what did you talk to her about? So the, the one on the left, she is um, actually probably three or four years younger there. Mm -hmm. But she looks older there than the one on the right-hand side. And so her thinking was when she first put this up, because this has been a while when we very first started working together, her thought was, I, I want to have a background that shows I love my family. I want to have a background that shows I'm working at my desk. And I said, well, let's, let's start with this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Lighting first and foremost is the most important and you need adequate lighting on your face. And so a ring light uh, is usually uh, one of the best options. If you want to get the glare off of your glasses, then you can put um, lights on either side, but the lights that you have at home um, are not suitable. Right. You never want to have that lamp that she has off to the side because the camera, which is reading <laughs> the light. And I got a lamp right next to me. Oh, so again, I got, I got Could homework. Could you just hand it to me? Hand it to me, please. Janice, I, we're going to take that one out. Every time I talk to you, you make me better. So I oh, will be, the next time we do it, I'll, I'll have all these things fixed. Okay. That is so true. And I do notice, because I did get a ring light and all I could see was, you know, like the rings in there. So you can soften those up by going at different yes. angles. Okay. Yes, 100%. And it's distracting for somebody to see that glare on your lights and I, your eyes. And I don't mean you specifically. Right. Right. So, but, um, and then camera placement. So we had a workshop Wednesday night with eight people. We, I limit the workshops to only eight people because the goal is that they'll be able to make the changes while we're in class for an hour and a half. And um, one of the people there who works professionally from at home, though, in our dental world, didn't realize that a separate camera 
was critical. So a separate camera, not the one that is on your laptop or not the one that's on your computer because you don't have the same quality and variability. It won't pick up the light like it's supposed to. So right. there's, there's lots of things. Yeah, yeah, oh, this was fun. Okay, so tell me about this one. Yes, Kate Williford, a oh, longtime uh, client actually of, of mine. I have dressed her uh, several times and uh, we set up her backdrop and her clothing and her lighting. So she is on a desk where she could stand. She mm -hmm. uh, has the largest CPA and financial planning uh, remote firm for dentists in the United States. So she's quite the professional. And she had... Um, coffee with Kate. So she would oh, invite people to interview that were in dentistry and highly respected. And so she contacts me one day and says, what do I do about these guests that show up with such bad lighting? And it's, it doesn't, it's not a good reflection on me that this is the person that I had on the program. And I suggested, just like we do in dentistry, having a pre-surgery meeting, you have a pre- uh, interview or pre zoom call time. And I tell people that I'm just checking their audio. Well, of course, when we check their audio, they can see the visual. Yeah. And that's when I might get to gently ask. So do you, do you have lighting in front of you? Or is this the location where you'll be? Because Kirk, as soon as, as soon as we have that backlighting behind us, that is what the camera will pick up and it'll always make you dark. Right. Now, I don't know either one of these people, but I would definitely oh. want to have coffee with Kate instead yes. of the other person. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, lady Who out of respect, who right. out of respect made more effort for you in that? Right, for sure. And this, this the picture speaks for itself. Yeah, now, thanks. I got another one of these. So oh, you do. All right. What about this one? Tell me oh, about this one. Oh, oh, fantastic. Um, this is Noel, Noel uh, Peschke mm -hmm. uh, with um, ultra, the, the toothbrush, uh, Sonicare, right? Okay. So brilliant, brilliant woman. And she took my workshop Wednesday night and I give them a questionnaire ahead of time and ask them how they want to be perceived. And she said, I am highly respected in my um, industry and I am a business owner and founder and I look like I'm working out of my bedroom. And so one of the points that we made sure to cover in the workshop is that long distance in that room, you will never be able to light that adequately without right. professional lighting. So she took the instruction, the tips, and this morning, early this morning, she sent me her after picture. So that's on the before, that's what she looked like throughout the workshop in the hour and a half. But she made notes, worked on it, said she was inspired, and said that now she actually looks more like herself. So, yeah. Yeah. I never even took depth into consideration. Depth is an important piece of this. Oh, it's huge. Wow. In fact, I was, you know, like you, we were talking before we went on. Mm -hmm. I, I love to take CE classes. And I saw that somebody had a, a Zoom workshop. And I'm like, oh, great. I'll, I'll watch because I always want to learn. And the person doing the training, their background was all gray and long. And I thought, oh. And the person that was trying to get help she was had this long room behind her and nobody has yet addressed the fact that the depth of the room is a limiting factor or contributor to what you're going to look like so anyway yeah. it's a big deal well i got some again more changes to make now tell us about this one good friend between the oh two of us. yes 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 so um this is rick williford and he's the president of denimetrics mm -hmm. and many of us as consultants have been using his services now he sent me that picture at the top and he said, this is what I used to look like when I was getting on. He said, because it was a casual, this is the words. It was a casual conversation. Mm -hmm. And my thoughts are, we can be casual in, in the way that what we wear and what we do, but as soon as we're slouching, as soon as we're not looking directly into the camera, it makes it harder for our audience. So, this is Rick's after. And one of the things we did was to simplify that background, not to have 5,000 books. We know you read, you know, um, in the uh, example you had before of Kate Williford, she used to have equal number of books that you have behind her. And what it does is whether we know it or not, 
it's distracting. So totally. what do I have behind me that's distracting or not distracting, or does it just kind of frame and balance the overall picture? Yeah, that's a good point. I never thought of that. And I was so worried about like just doing a plain white wall or like whatever. And so I, I think these are really, really great points. And it's so true too, because when I do interviews, I'm like, he's got a bottle of whiskey on the counter. Yeah, like yeah, behind yeah. Him. Like what? he's in a dental practice. Oh, a friend gave that to him. Or there's a football helmet. Be did you right. play Ohio State? You know, like yeah, oh, I did you know? I, I went there, but I didn't play. So there's all these things, and I just never took them in consideration. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thanks. Good stuff. Now keep unpackaging this. What other things do I need to be aware of? Or what are some big misconceptions that people have when it comes to this? The misconception is that. Uh, what you have to say will be more important than the visual, but the visual strongly communicates value to us or interest. And it's really hard for us to get over that. And I believe all of us want to be respected. And the way I respect someone is to show that I spent time and energy getting ready for my time with them. So if you, if you would go to somebody's wedding that you really loved and cared about, you dress accordingly. So I think it's fine to be casual. We're, we're at home, so we're not dressing in suits. But what we're trying to do is make the lighting and the backdrop look as um, easy to read as possible. So I want, I'll give you a homework. Here's a fun idea. I want you to look at all the ads um, now that are out that show that people are on uh, Zoom calls. And what they'll do is they're stock photos. And they'll have, let's say, eight people showing up their little squares. And a stock photo will always have a light background. So it's a light background like mine and a light background like yours, which is pleasant to the eye. The thing is, that stock photo, the average person that gets on a call, on a Zoom call, it's dark behind them because either they have to have proper lighting or in a small enough room that they're backed up to it, or they're using a virtual backdrop. So I have a virtual backdrop behind me. Yeah, I couldn't figure that, like yeah. that's a really good one. Thank so you. Do you, have, do you have a green, like how do you do that? with a green All right, background? then here's the deal. So optimal would be not to use a virtual background at all, because then you don't have that little bit of flickering or, or fuzziness, but you and I do phone calls and uh, do Zoom calls or interviews at all times of the day, right? So I might do one at 5 a.m. here because it's 8 a.m. back in back east, or it might go um, later. So what determines of whether you can do a virtual background or not is not at all what people think. So what determines whether you can do a virtual background is the um, the capacity of your computer and making sure that you have updated your software. So that means older computers, less capacity, software that you haven't updated will, when you try to do a virtual background, it will give you this whole pixelated person, right? right. So that individual could add a green screen and get a better result. I don't have to have a green screen because my computer is uh, current enough and I've updated my software. But what I want you to know is that's actually my office. So that is what you would see behind me if I didn't have the virtual background. Okay, so, so wait, wait, wait. So you took a real photo and you use that as your yes. virtual. Okay. And here's the benefit of it. Here's the benefit of it. That is my personality, that is my taste, that is recognizable if I were to not have a virtual background. And the big piece that you have control over is I can lighten that. So I lightened that, right, with Photoshop. I just took a, a photo, lightened it a tad in terms of overall color. So you get that brightness and you are gonna be drawn to that brightness. You don't even know it as you're looking at me, but you're gonna feel a, a pleasant feeling because it's light colored behind me. Now here's the downside of um, not doing virtual. If you and I were to start this conversation, which was at, started at 1230, the light off to the side from a window might be just fine. But what starts to happen as 
the conversation goes on. Yeah, it gets darker. So it I, gets got, darker. I got another one after this. So it's 1230 by you. Yeah. It's going to be 330. Yeah. I'll have a short one. But, you know, it's always like, oh, my gosh, I can't even see you. And by the by 430 around here, it's yep. super dark. So what you're saying is all the variables change. Yes. yes. Throughout the course of the day. And that is absolutely true. I watched the CE course again. I told we were, you and I were talking ahead of time about what keeps me interested in dentistry anymore. And this was on photography um, in, in dentistry. There was a dentist there from Romania, one from New York and another one from Wisconsin. And um, they had the worst uh, blank white walls behind them. And the only reason that the white walls weren't nice or aesthetically good to look at is because unless you shine a separate light, Kurt, on the wall behind you, a light that's behind you, not in front of you on the wall, it always comes up kind of gray, right? And literally one of the dentists, as she was presenting in an hour and a half, the lighting changed and she stood up and like pulled the you know shades and all of that's just unnecessary. We're yeah. still gonna do this for at least a couple more months. I think we're going to do it a good part of the next year. Yeah, I think that's one piece is just getting your expectations because people are like, I'm just done with Zoom. You know, I think the expectation, you're right, is going to go longer. Um, and I would love for you to talk about, you know, best practices, male or female, or things that you see that are pet peeves that might be gender specific, like with yeah. hair or is there anything that comes to mind? You're like, oh my gosh, you never, you never do that, you know, or so okay. male so, or female or whatever. It doesn't matter. Okay. You know, you asked. So the, the number one thing that men do is not put a separate camera at the top. They use it on their laptop. And so you're seeing this conversation like this. So you're looking up my nose when I'm talking to you. Do you know any type of a thing? It should always uh, no, be. No, I'm looking at the top of your head. Like, so if we were having a conversation, instead of me oh. seeing you, mm -hmm. right? Because on many laptops, which is what people use, that camera is down towards the bottom. Right. Or it's not up high enough. Or you have to tip the uh, screen so much. So let's say the camera is on the top lid. You have to tip it so much that now you're seeing the ceiling. So okay. there are three things, no nos in the background, whether you're male or female. One of them is blinds. Those blinds look cheap. They you don't know, no blinds. Yeah, you're the judging people is, by the quality of their blinds sometimes. Yes, like, oh absolutely. my gosh, you're, absolutely. you're in one of your kids' bedrooms, you know? Like, yeah, oh yeah, exactly. The other one is a door, like the middle of a door frame. No, that's that's a, a vertical that you're looking at that's competing with the other person's vertical. And the uh, other one, and it's not just special for you, is busy, busy backgrounds. Like how many books do we have? Or writing. I'm trying to read your your sign that says um, "Love cures all," oh, or uh, you know that type of thing. Yeah. Um, but so the number one no no for men is they are often disrespectful of the other person's time. They yeah. feel and act as though just who they are is enough. And our visual communicates respect um, or, or, or respect or not respect. Now, the number one mistake that women make is um, they can look really washed out because of the lighting that we have to use. We actually can put or want to use brighter lipstick, we want to have a solid color shirt on so it's not competing with what's behind us. And um, don't get so nervous about what it is that you're going to wear that it doesn't allow you to just relax and get close enough to the camera. So optimally, you want to have this space between the top of your head. There you go. Like about that much or so? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. See, in the overall presence. So what you're doing now, though, is looking down at your camera. Um, and I really want it like, are you thinking eye level like that? Always so that looking straight at so I can look straight at you. Okay. That's really good. Like, see, I, see now you got the ceiling. Right. Yeah. So do you have a separate camera? I do. And I couldn't get it working. So it's up oh. here. Here, I'll even show you guys. I don't yeah. Know. So I've got my separate monitor up here with the camera. And for some reason, I couldn't get it linked. Now, I also, this is probably, I'm 50 now. See, there's the care. ceiling. Uh -huh. So I've got the deviated septum too. So like if, oh, okay. like I have dentists that go, oh, dude, you need surgery. I'm like, what are you talking about? And they're like, okay. <laughs> like, 
I, aren't you listening to the content? They're like, no, 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 no. And you got a lower central that's chipped too. And I'm like, oh, oh teeth, okay. teeth for sure. Teeth, teeth for, for sure. sure. But yeah, I think eye level, having a separate camera speaks yeah. to quality, a good microphone, whether it be a headset or whatever, totally yeah. agree. I never thought of the solid patterns. Like that's really very, very important because I don't want to be fighting. They're fighting in the background. Oh, Whereas, it looks like a circus. They've got a circus going on here. And you're like, whoa. Yeah. So I think the really casual look worked at the beginning because we're all thinking, all right, right, we're on lockdown. We're working for home. No, it's going to be a year later before you know it. And if you'd like to be productive in your conversations, act like it's work. Act, yeah. Wall Street Journal wrote about the fact that how strongly affected we are by what we wear, even when we're at home. And I think that's important. But my big deal is I was raised that you were supposed to show respect for the other person by being on time yeah. and by what you wore. It was like your Sunday best. See, you're too young. You're way younger than me. But we used to have Sunday best. We would wear Sunday clothes out of respect and then get out of your Sunday clothes when you got home. <laughs> I totally agree. The first one, no one would ever you disagree. You know, like you, being on time is the ultimate shine yeah. of, sign of respect. Yeah. And then mama always used to say, you know, dress up. You can always, you know, take a layer off, but you yeah. never assume casual, yeah. like, you yeah. know, yeah. you know, and she'd always say, you can always take off a tie. Oh, your mom, you know? your mom was smart. Yeah. 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 And so we would dress, you know, she'd dress us up in those big, like uh huge collar with a plaid, all that oh, stuff, yeah. you know, Easter Sunday was almost like every day so, or every Sunday, yeah. but I totally agree. Like I, mm -hmm. I, I know that that screams, you know, there's a certain level of respect when you show up. What other things would you say are considerations just in the new digital world? And also it's anyone's guess what the future looks like. But what, what do you think the future is going to look like with all this in the short term or long term of visual conferences? I think that we are learning to like some aspects of the Zoom calls in that I feel more connected to you because I can see you and that a phone call doesn't allow me that same connection as being able to see you. I actually really like it. But all of us want to belong. And I think meetings in person are going to come back in some way and some form because we socially like to be there. It's a like Hinman's a social occurrence, right? It's yes, it's about the CE, but it's not. I think CE of high quality um, will be available and you'll have to pay for the good stuff. And we'll start to learn that free sometimes just means it's a sales pitch. Um, totally agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. Can you speak to this too? So I have a daughter who's a sophomore at the University of Wisconsin, and that's been, you know, everything's been turned on their heads. And she shared with me, this was great. She says, Dad, in a big lecture hall, in a, you don't learn a lot, a thousand people on, but they do breakout rooms and they found mm -hmm. that there's much better, like she goes, I learned so much from the other students more than I do like somebody just speaking to a thousand people. Is there a level of intimacy we can create with Zoom rooms or whatever? Have oh, you found sure. it? Like what's oh, your learning, sure. what's your learning been in this? Sure. And and I think you said beforehand that you had some really good instruction with Catherine Itell on that, who's doing that. And and going into breakout separate um, sections, the most common mistake we make as a moderator is oftentimes not giving those groups enough time because we we do start to share and learn from one another whether like we were at the ADMC meeting and the way we continued to learn or go to our sponsors was through the break room so we often need more time but there's no downside whether it's the teacher or your daughter or some of my grandchildren that are um, of school age or high school age of having a separate camera having lighting that allows them to have a presence because we train people how to treat us. And, and the big thing is once you understand how to get this lighting in this backdrop, this takes me two seconds to sit down and just turn on the light and I'm good to go.
That's awesome. That's awesome. So I'm going to have you back again and again and again. I promise okay. you next time I will up my game. So uh, All right. you're gonna, you're making me better every time. Now, I have so many other questions. And um, one of them is we talked about the workshops at the beginning. Mm -hmm. You are a fabulous teacher. Thank you. Uh, which one do I ask first? Who signed up for them or what the workshop is about? Well, okay, wait, I'll answer that. Let's okay. talk about what you teach. <laughs> You actually do workshops on this. What are the workshops? And then I want to ask you, who signed up for them when okay. you launched them? Yeah, that's interesting. So the workshops are for an hour and a half. They're limited to eight people. And the beauty of this is you can actually see the attendees in terms of where they're at and what they want to do, right? So let's say I was to do a workshop on speaking. I wouldn't be able to immediately tell where somebody's at in their speaking. But when you get on these Zoom calls and the eight of you are lined up, you can clearly see, okay, haven't figured out lighting, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so every single piece that you, you need to know that helps you determine whether you want a virtual background or not, your lighting, all the four or five different options for that, it's all covered such that people like Noelle, you know, she made that improvement that was, you know, in less than 10 hours. And so who signed up? This was really interesting. You and I talked about uh, what, how did we feel or what happened the first part of March? And I right. said to you that I really, I really pulled away from our dental industry for quite a long time and really thought long and hard whether I wanted to work anymore. And only when I became passionate about dentistry itself again did that work. But what happened was I had in the past always put out a newsletter once a month and it was always strong and full of content about confidence and uh, verbal skills in dentistry, et cetera. And I didn't put one out in March and I didn't put one out for the rest of the months and I, I'll start again in January, but I put a short constant contact to the 5,500 people that are on my mailing list and they're on my mailing list in that they signed up for it, right? I, I, they said they wanna hear from you. And those were the people that I might've worked with them 10 years ago or 15 years ago, um, I'd say about, 70% are in dentistry. Others are from, have heard me speak in different arenas, but they are people that know that they're on Zoom at least two to three times a week, or they're dentists that are doing, um, you know, they're not real lengthy, but they're doing video conferencing with their patients or they're having to speak, right? So we used to work so hard on our stage presence and then we didn't work at all on our Zoom presence, but this is our stage right now. You are so right. And we don't know how long this is gonna last, but there's one no. thing for sure. We do have to, we're, we're human beings that need communication. We need connection. Yes. And so yeah. as digital as this is, and I always love people in person, this is just the way we gotta do it for a while. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, this is Thanks awesome. Thanks for having me. I love, it. wait, 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 before you go, for the benefit okay. of people listening on iTunes, if you're listening to the audio podcast, tell them where to go, because I'll have the links in here, but where can we find out more about what you do, Janice, like sure. all of your stuff? You just Google my name, Janice Hurley, and it will come up, um, Dentistry's Image Expert, and the workshops are listed there uh, right on the first page. Um, we added two more, we just added them today, because the first three um, sold out. Um, they're sold out for January. So February 10th and February 24th are the next workshops. And as soon as eight people sign up for those, then that's it. Yeah. For yes, those. You, yeah. You are a gem and a, she's you. truly a great teacher. Now here's the other thing. She's a straight shooter. So she's not going to sugarcoat. She'll tell you <laughs> where'd you get that to get that off. Like, so you don't waste a lot of time with you. Yeah. She, she's going to get you where you want to go. Uh, that's the goal, right? Yeah. You're there for a reason. If you signed up for the workshop, you want results we can make it happen. So that's what it's all about. Well, I appreciate you, my friend. It's I always good to see you. you. I want you to come back again in you know, a couple okay. of weeks and teach us something else. Now, wait okay. a minute. You got to stick around while we say goodbye to everybody else here on the podcast, but thank you for tuning in to the best practices show. 
We always enjoy having people here. And if you enjoyed today, which I know you did, just do us a favor, hit the share button, share this with your friends, keep sending us suggestions for shows that you want to see, whether it be with Janice or anybody else, we want to sure, be sure that we bring you the content you want to hear about and see. And until we see you next time, keep watching the best practices show. You guys enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.